we doing ladies and gentlemen welcome back to Monday coming in hot but a little soft how are you how was your weekend things are good it's great to hear welcome back to Evans Tony Robbins podcast we might even have a stop in from Gary V nah I'm just fucking with you we're just gonna talk shit and get through it, cause ain't nothing to it but to do it, baby. Ha. Sometimes you can just get away with talking over a song. You don't even have to give it the song work, you know? Ladies and gentlemen, if it's your first time to the podcast, welcome. Does it ever get out of control? Is it gonna get any better than this? No. This is about it. Okay, it's a fever pitch right here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday, okay? Coming in hot. You know what we do. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. You just make a fucking sentence rhyme, and you can tell people to do anything. Look what Hitler did, you know? <clears throat> and listen, that statement probably going to get your boy canceled in the future. But who the fuck is not getting canceled, okay? Who... Any person worth their salt is getting canceled nowadays, okay? So many people who don't even deserve to get canceled are getting canceled, you know? It's just a weird canceling world. It's weird that we invented this. I would love to see. This is the way my mind works. I would love to see a couple things. When I, when I, when I pass away and I turn into a fucking thousand butterflies and drift away on my deathbed in front of all my grandkids... And the last thing I'm going to say to them, be like, son, I want you to get real close to me. And I want you to know, ain't no pussy like new pussy. And then I'm just going to evaporate into a thousand butterflies. And my wife, God rest her soul, she's going to be next to me just wiping a tear away. She's going to be like, he was a wise man. He was a wise man. Anyway, I want to see the moment after, you know, I, I pass on, all the thousand butterflies go to heaven or hell, wherever I end up, okay? Because guess what? Still up in the air. Still up in the air. Hasn't been decided. When I get there, and if I'm granted a few things, one of them is I want to go back and I want to see the dinosaurs. Take me there, all right? Let me see them running around. Let me see them in action. Just want to see the dinosaurs, okay? Childhood fantasy, fulfilling it, all right? I also want to see how much money politicians pocketed through the U.S. government. I think it would blow our fucking dicks in the dirt, make our willies tingle in a bad way, you know? But I like seeing the moment of when shifts happened. What was the straw that broke the camel's back? Who was the first person to cancel someone? And it started the momentum. You know, it was the one, you ever seen those ridiculous YouTube videos where people do a fucking domino effect of a thousand different things that, hey, get a job. Go do something with your life instead of making this 30 second internet video where you have a hamster involved and you're eating spaghetti. I'm kidding, I like those videos. But the domino effect of tick, 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 to get us to this point. Like, was there a place we should have zigged and we zagged? And now this is the cancel culture we live in? If anything, I thought COVID should have been a wake up call that, hey, we can't just cancel things. We have to work at them, we got to replace them with better ideas and everything. Do I know even how I got on this topic? No. Oh yeah, people getting canceled that shouldn't be canceled. It's a weird world out there. It's a weird world that we live in. All right, you gotta be worried about what you say. You gotta be worried about what you do. It must be insane to work at a regular job and to not be able to voice your opinion. Like, do you think, 
that HR workers go home and violently beat their kids to cope, to cope, okay? I'm not justifying it, but I get it. With the amount of bullshit that they have to deal with. I couldn't imagine the people who are just talking shit because they can. Why not? Why not? If the rules are, are you know, don't hate the player, hate the game. That's the way it's set up, you know. I know a friend who is a manager. People come to him all the time with ridiculous ideas, things that they try to get away with, reasons that they can't get fired. It, 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 it will blow your dick in the dirt. But this is the world we live in. This is America. Don't get you slipping, though. But I just want to know where it happened, when it started, why it started, and why it became okay. Also, the weird thing is, why are celebrities still a thing? Like, isn't it crazy that fame used to be a thing where it was like actors and musicians? And that was kind of it. And what was it? You know, athletes as well. But there was like, we thought people who just played pretend were so fucking cool, you know? But it's like, it's crazy that that was a thing. And it's crazy that it's still a thing. And for some reason, people put so much value on those individuals' opinions. When you look at like, and this is me trying to teeter away from politics, and I keep getting dragged back into it. When you look at like manipulation of masses through getting a celebrity off TikTok to try to push your agenda, your opinion on people. It's just like, it's crazy. I'm like, oh, people think that people are this, this stupid? That they're just like, oh yeah, my favorite TikToker did say that was a good idea. I'll trust the vaccine. And ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen, I'm not going at the vaccine today. Listen, it got FDA approval. Kind of weird that I got it so fast, but hey, it got FDA approval. And I never gave a shit at all if people wanted to get it. I'm not against people getting it. Just do you. Do you whatever you want to do. Risk versus reward. If you got to get it, if you want to get it, if you just feel safer, if you feel better, that's your decision. That's your prerogative, baby. You do you. I'm 100% with you. I love you. Okay. I love you, baby. Um, because I can only imagine, listen, as someone who sees a lot of comedy, uh, I would say daily through research and just watching sets and everything, I see so much talk about politics. Uh, nothing. I, I honestly, it's got to be one of the things that I just can't stand. I, it's not that I can't stand it, but I'm just like, ugh. whenever I see maybe it's unworked jokes on politics, I just, I don't really like it too much. I don't like vaccine jokes that much. I think because they're just low hanging fruit. Uh, and obviously people want to have these jokes, do whatever the fuck you want to do. I'm not taking shots at anyone. Uh, but for me, I kind of glaze over when I start hearing about politics and vaccines in jokes on a regular basis. So I can only imagine I'm thinking about you, the listener. Okay. Having to hear me talk about vaccines and politics I'm sorry. Okay, we're going to try to step away from that realm. Um, I did get some people upset at me for my rant about the homeless people. Listen, Austin, I'll never apologize for that, okay? I'll never apologize for the rant that I did on the homeless people. You want to know something crazy? After that episode came out, I went down to uh, Creek and Cave Comedy Club out here in Austin. And beautiful place, beautiful place. Has a bear on the stage. Love it. And... I saw the lady I was talking about that did heroin in her foot. I saw her again three times, but this day it was a Thursday. So she does heroin multiple, multiple times a week in different locations. It was the same block, but the block, think of it as an L. She was around the corner on Thursday. So she picks and chooses what day, what corner she wants to hang out on. And also I was approached by a homeless person that same day. And she goes, and this is the thing. This is the thing about me. I acknowledge people. You know, if someone wants to be acknowledged, someone's, you know, if they say hello to me, I say hello. You know, your boy's not that big of a scumbag all the time. She says, hey, sir, how you doing? I said, good, ma'am. How you doing? She's like, good. Can I talk to you for a second? I literally was late for a set. Um, not late, late, but if I would have stopped, I would have been late. I go, I'm sorry. I'm late right now. I got to go. 
She goes, no, no, please, sir. No. Listen, I'm late. I got to go. No, no, please, no, please, please. She starts making a scene. And I just go, ah, all right. And then she goes, okay. I go, what's up? Sir, in Jesus Christ's name, his son almighty. And I was like, oh, she's about to give me a blessing. So I kind of put my defense down a little bit. I'm like, she just wants to talk about the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because sometimes that happens, you know? And I kind of ease up and I'm like, okay, let's just, let's get through this bit. She goes, in his name almighty, I had a $20 bill and a $1 bill. I had the $20 bill wrapped up in the $1 bill. But see, I had the $1 bill in my pocket. And without me knowing that $20 bill wrapped up in my $1 bill in my pocket somehow fell out of my pocket. And I go, I was confused by the riddle, but I go, I don't have any money. And she just goes, throws her hands up and walks away. And then I went about my business. She was all about the hustle, you know, all about the hustle. I saw this other young lady getting hustled by a homeless lady. I said, girl, where'd you get them pants? And the girl's like, oh my God, these are my roommates. I don't know why she stopped. She said, these are my roommates. I got them out of her closet. You got any money? No, I don't. Keep moving. Keep moving. That's what she said to her. She didn't give a fuck about those pants. It's rough out in those streets. It's rough out in these streets. But listen, some people got upset that I was taking shots at Austin. Listen, no one loves Austin as much as people in Austin. And if I have to be honest with you, because there's a lot, I, I have a lot of friends in California who are comedians and there's, there's always this thing. People ask me about, I'll say, Hey, it's You just do your stand up. Do your stand up anywhere. Get experience. Just do it, do it. And you're going to be okay. No one's going to, I think the era of stand up where you get discovered, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone or few and far between, but I've always been of the mind of why would you ever just want to base it on luck, hoping that you're at the right place at the right time. Just do your stand-up. Put your time in. Put your work in. Figure out something. Don't hope that someone's going to discover you or find you. But I understand the mindset, you know, of the fear of missing out, of being like, oh, I want to be in this place and want to be in that place. And I tell this to friends in California in general, because I'm kind of talking about Austin in general. People move away from a place and they shit on that place that they just moved from. I grew up in the Anlo Valley. It used to be Quartz Hill, but for some reason they moved it a block and now they consider it Palmdale Lancaster. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But I grew up in the AV, the Anlo Valley. God bless it, okay? God bless it. I'm a desert rat till the day I die, okay? And I'm proud of it. Because guess what? When you're born in a hard place, it makes you appreciate life. It's a measuring stick. I'd be like, look where I started and where I can go. And it, and it also gives you respect for people and for understanding that. But even I noticed that when I was in college and when I was graduating, a lot of people from the Ella Valley, once they move away, they try to talk shit about it. Because what is it? It's, it's not your, 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 it's your attitude, not your latitude that breaks down who you are. Okay. So a lot of people move away and they think by just changing their zip code that they're better than where they came from. You got to have respect, got to have honor because that place gave you what you needed. Okay. All the hardships you experienced there gave you what you needed to move on. And the same thing with moving out of California, California to me, I haven't been to all the States in the country. And I'll tell this to friends because you know, a lot of people think that I moved to Texas and just turn my back on California. California is still, in my experience, the dopest state from a geographical standpoint. The beaches, the weather, the mountains, Yosemite, the Great Oaks. You got Big Bear, you got Tahoe. You have all these places all wrapped into one state. Coastlines, coast for days, baby. I've been to Texas coastline. Hey. Get back in line, okay? Get back in line, Corpus Christi. Maybe I went to the wrong beaches, but hey, get back in line. Yish, when we talk about coastline, all right? 
But a lot of people think that, you know, California is still an amazing place, beautiful place. I hope it has a great revival. I do, because it's a place I would love to visit, maybe retire one day in. You know, I, I always have this fascination of one day retiring in Carpinteria, having a little house near the beach, just living out my fucking days there, you know, walking my dog, feeding pigeons and shit. That's who your boy wants to become when he's an old man. Um, but there's a lot of things. In, in, but here's the big thing. Austin is great in a lot of ways. Would I want to be anywhere else in the country right now? No. Because there is a bubbling comedy scene. I think it's great. I think it's a good place to be around a lot of good comedians. And uh, I, get, I get to work on the craft a lot. However... These motherfuckers lied to me. Okay. I've heard about Austin, you know, because your boy comes from the music world. I've heard about Austin for years. The music capital. The greatest place for musicians. You go there and it's a fucking bubbling music scene and the greats and all of this. They either lied to me or this place doesn't exist anymore. And liberal agendas just tore it all down because when you start telling homeless people hey you can just camp wherever you want you don't even need it i can't even camp wherever i want i gotta go to a campground but it's okay for them to in the street you're gonna push people out and that's what i think happened to austin because from a from a city standpoint is it better than la i don't know i never really liked la anyway and maybe that's the big takeaway because I do get asked this probably on a weekly basis, what I think of Austin. I'm not really a city boy, you know? It's not really for me that fast, you know, living in the city and all this. No, I need some, your boy's a peacock. I got to stretch my wings a bit. You know, I got to get out there. Caw, 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 you know? Um, but I do love Texas. Listen. I do love Texas. Would I want to live anywhere else? No. Do I love the Texas way of life? Yeah. And here's the thing that you realize when you're living in uh, Texas outside of Austin. I would say 80% of my time is spent outside of Austin. Texas is, it has great people. And the rumors aren't true. I meet someone yesterday even. They have these preconceived notions about California. California is not what people in Texas think it is. People in Texas are not what people in California think. Every single person I've met here has been more than welcoming. Awesome people. People who really believe just in liberty and everybody's pursuit of happiness and what they want to do. And it's great. It's great to see. I'm sure there's bad eggs everywhere, you know? But I love that idea because it's such a healthy mindset. It's such a healthy mindset to be um, even in a relationship. That's one thing that I've realized and I've grown from, you know, going from dating as a 16 year old, 17, 18, 19, 20. You realize what a healthy relationship is supposed to be. And it's the same mindset. You don't try to control anybody. You don't tell people what to do. If it's not hurting anybody else, you just let people be who they are. And that's how I approach you know, my relationship that I'm in, and I approach a relationship with everybody else, you know? Everybody should be able to do what they want. Um, and I think that's that's a big thing that I've seen in Texas. But listen, Texas has so much pride. There is not one thing in this goddamn state where a Texan doesn't go, huh, well, maybe we should put our fucking flag on it, huh? No matter what it is, it could be a tire, and a Texan would be like, now, how do we put this tire into a fucking shape of a Texas flag or the outline of our state? And they're like, well, it's a tire. It needs to be round. And they're like, good point. But how do we do it? Well, we can't, sir. How, it wouldn't be able to it would go do, 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 do. Yeah, but would it still drive is what I'm asking you. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess for a bit. Good enough for me. Patch it up. And when it doesn't work, they're like, well, we at least should fucking etch the state outline into the middle of the hub yeah we can do that good enough for me they love it they love it austinites can't take a joke about austin though that is listen 
That is one thing that I've realized from doing shows here. I've tried to even poke fun again at Austinites. They they can't handle it. They are so sensitive about Austin. They they don't like you mentioning the, about how weird it is. No, they don't want it. They do not want it. Um, but one thing, dude. I cursed myself. I thought I said, "Hey," to my girl. I go, "Looks like we made it through the hot spell." No, this past week was crazy. Yesterday, I had three layers of sweat on me. Three layers of sweat. That means I sweat before I left today. I sweat uh, yesterday, I mean. I sweat in the midday. And then I sweat again at night when I decide to take my dog for uh, a walk. Your boy sweated a three-layer dip of sweat on my body. And that's something I just never experienced before. You know what else that made me think of? Do you remember in high school, in PE, some days you would have to really play. It was hot out in the desert. Depending on what time your PE class was, you were fucked for the rest of the day because you're going to sweat. You have to run the mile. Sometimes I would have fourth period. I think one day I had fifth period or one year I had fifth period PE. Kind of like 1 p.m., sweat my ass off and then after all they would do was they would be like uh yeah just go fucking change back into your regular clothes and go into class and then you'd be sitting there with a fucking case of axe body spray because that's what we all did that was like generations had like huffing paint my generation had fucking axe body spray that all the guys would just spray on each other we would mix flavor they had like chocolate flavor what you best believe your boy had it though. They had like chocolate musk. What? Arctic blast. Huh? It is only marketed towards fuckboys. Because when have you ever heard a girl be like, you know what I like my guys to smell like? Arctic blast. What girls have been to the Arctic? And what guys know what the Arctic smells like? You know, you get fucking winter green or something, cedar body spray. You know what it's gonna, you know what a cedar is. You're like, oh, this is gonna smell, smell woodsy. You get Arctic blast on you. No one's, no fucking Eskimo is ever gonna be like, oh, that's Arctic blast? Reminds me of home. You know, no one's ever gonna do that. Who was in charge of naming these? Because they just like, they're just like fucking Mountain Dew flavors. Arctic blast. I don't even know if that's a real flavor. They would they were just it was marketed towards testosterone, hormone driven 16 year old boys, just fucking filled to the rafters with cum. We're just ready, you know. They're like, this shit's called lust chocolate. This shit's called finger blaster. Axe body spray. Get the hell out of here. I feel like if you try to buy Axe body spray as an adult, they should put you on a watch list. I've never even seen it. I haven't seen it in years. Axe body spray? I didn't even know it still existed until uh, a comedian told me that he saw a campaign from them. And I was like, what? Axe body spray didn't go out of business in 2008? I feel like Axe Body Spray is one of those things where once you become an adult, you know how like you leave like you stop believing in Neverland and you leave like you can't see the food because you grow up? I feel like that's what happens with Axe Body Spray is that once you grow up and you reach a certain age, you can't see it in the store anymore, you know? That's what it feels like because I never see that shit. But I sure as fuck was naked, making fucking nuclear bombs in high school with it just all the guys just mixing it with each other arctic chocolate lust cum filled blast that's what we were using at the end of the day just kids were dying from asthma attacks with that shit on and you would just spray it on yourself to just try to cover up just sweat because you know what no one did in high school after having PE? You have to run the mile. Dude, you're sweating. My my competition 
it would my competitiveness it would kick in and i'd be like well i gotta fucking outrun these fuck faces and i gotta get an a on this mile well, i don't give a shit get competitive playing fucking paddle ball or pickleball the fuck is pickleball okay we were out here in fucking either sweats or little blue shorts that was our only option but you know what no one did after PE class at my school, took a shower. No one hit the showers for the 15, the 10 minutes you had to change. They expected you in like 10 minutes to shower. First, you had to hit the lockers, then shower, change, do your hair again. Does that mean you're bringing shampoo, body wash to the school? No one ever used our showers. I'll be honest with you. I barely remember where they were. I remember during swim season, I had to like walk through that area to realize, to like do uh, like physicals. And that's when I realized there's actually showers in the locker room. And then from that day forward, I was like, oh, these just look like a ghost lives in here. No one's showering here. There's a goddamn black widow spider that controls this area. Okay. I would get physicals at school. That was the weirdest shit ever. I'm like, how is this old man touching my nuts right now going to tell me I'm okay to swim? That was the slickest pedophile ever. He just went one day to the school and was like, hey, you, you know what you guys need? You guys don't want a lawsuit, do you? No, we don't want a fucking lawsuit. Well, then here's what you got to do. I, I can make sure that doesn't happen for you guys. All right. But there's only one thing I got to do to these boys. What? Anything. I need to touch their nuts. I need to get my old fillers on their on their balls. Okay? What for? Don't worry about it. I'm the medical expert here. Well, I got to make sure they don't have a hernia. Okay. You're just going to touch their balls? You're going to feel for the hernia? Can you feel that in the stomach? Yeah, you could, but... I feel, I'm more of a, a hands-on person, okay? Because you could feel, if you press the abdomen and everything, discomfort, you can feel the hernia. But I like to, have, I like to hold their balls and then have them cough. <laughs> Principal, we'll take all my money. How much do we need for this? Ah, don't worry about it. Are you going to wear gloves? Sometimes. But that's going to cost you more. Ah, don't worry about wearing gloves. Can I be honest with you? I don't remember the guys wearing gloves. All right? That was always so awkward. I remember uh, one year. <laughs> I remember one year. So bad. Standing in a line of my friends waiting to get the physical. And it's awkward as fuck for all of us. There's always one guy who tries to look at your dick always one guy and you're like dude why are you looking at my deck he's like it's just a joke and i'm like it's not how jokes work okay that's not how jokes work at all um but pull down my pants expose my tostones you know and as the guy goes to check my balls my buddy puts his finger in my butt not in my butt now listen 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 i misspoke there all right but he goes to like boop and gets me to leap forward. And I like jump into the guy like, whoa. And uh, everybody laughed. The guy didn't really know what happened. He assumed something weird happened, but he didn't make a big deal out of it. Cause I feel like in that moment he could reverse me to me. And he's like, ah, I gotcha. You know, could have gotten into some trouble, but guys do weird shit like that. You know, I remember one year, uh, who knew I was going to talk about this on the podcast. The guy took me to the back. He took everyone one at a time behind the thing. He was sitting on a chair and made you uh, listen. If he was feeling, if he was feeling, this is mind blown right now. If he was feeling your balls and having you cough and he was feeling for it, why was he sitting down? Why was I standing up and he was sitting down? Why did he need to look? Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but you know what was fucked up about that moment? And, and it felt weird. Your boy's exposed. 
he does the test. And then on my hand, some little trifling hoe had drawn like a picture, like a smiley face and all this stuff in class. You know, girls would do weird shit. And they'd be like, let me draw on you. And you'd be like, all right, fuck it. They would write their name. And you're like, I got to wash that shit off. Because uh, you go to the next class. And they're like, who the fuck is Kimberly? Who the fuck is Kimberly? And um, this guy checks my balls. I'm still standing there exposed. And he goes, oh, what's that? Are you just going to do small talk right now while I'm exposed? Maybe say, hey, you can pull your pants up. And then he starts asking about it. And I'm like, oh, this thing. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And he's like talking to me while my balls are just in his face. Didn't feel okay. Didn't feel okay. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, listen. It was a weird episode. It was a weird episode. It was an okay one, right? I hope you enjoyed it. I hope he got you through something. Hope he got one giggle out of there. But listen, I love how I said I wasn't going to talk about politics, then proceeded to talk about Texas and California in a roundabout way of talking about politics and the the belief systems behind those states. Um, but do you know what this whole high school thing reminded me of? The writing on the hand. I once was in this situation. It was very awkward. I was, I don't know if I've told this. I was in this situation where it was, uh, it was this girl's birthday. All right. And I was trying to be sweet. I think it was freshman year or sophomore year in high school. And it was her birthday and we had first period together. And I knew she had a crush on me and your boy was feeling her too. You know, I'm going to be real with you. Your boy was feeling her. But just in the way, your boy was a wild horse, all right? I'll be honest with you. Wild horse. I wore Axe body spray. Chocolate lust, all right? Wild horse. You give me some oats, I'll come into the pen to nibble every now and then. You ever try to shut that gate, I'll hop the fence, you'll never see me again, all right? Listen. It was her birthday, and I thought, here's a cute idea. I'm going to get her a card. This is so gay. So, so. And I don't mean homophobic. I'm, I'm using these slang terms because this is what it felt like at that time. Okay, I'm just bringing you back. I'm a storyteller. Plus, I had a guy touch my balls in high school. Okay, I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community. All right, cool. It's this girl's birthday. I decide I'm going to write her a card and I'm going to say, for your birthday, I'm mine or your, I'm yours or something like that. And I put... <laughs> I put a bow on myself. Oh my God, Evan, this is terrible. This is so bad. Ah, uh, cringing. Ah, uh, I don't know why I brought this up. But fuck it, we got to go through it. If you're going through hell, just keep moving. Anyway. And I put the bow on me while she's reading the card. And as she's reading it, I put it on and she's like loving the card. I like was this thing and I think there was like a gift inside. And then when she looks up and I have the bow, she goes, oh my God, like, that's so sweet. She like comes up, like hugs me and everything. Um, I feel like she gave me a kiss on the cheek or something. I was like, oh, wow. All right, cool. Guess we doing this thing today. Good thing I wore my chocolate lust. Um, I was going to Arctic blaster, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're talking and she goes, I just, it's crazy. Like, this is such a good birthday. I can't believe you're my boyfriend. And then I'm just like, oh, Oh no. And I go, what? She's like, it's just crazy that like, I've liked you so much and like all this stuff. And like, now you're my boyfriend. That's just nuts. And she was so excited. And there's two other people sitting next to us. And they realized what was happening too, which made it 10 times more awkward. And then I literally, in hindsight, I probably should have just been her boyfriend. In hindsight, that would have been an easier, uh, Thing to, to deal with because then I'd be like, all right, I'm breaking up with her in three days. I shouldn't have ruined her birthday is what I'm thinking because what came out of my mouth next was, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean I'm, I'm not your boyfriend. I just meant that like we can hang out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't mean that, and I felt terrible because she was embarrassed. But not only that, she didn't talk to me again for the rest of the day, and not only that. That kind of was the beginning of the end. Okay, she kind of hated me after that, you know. Um, and that's just the cross I have to bear. 
And that's what Arctic Blast does to you, though. Axe body spray. There's a lot of fumes. I'm probably entitled to some lawsuit wearing Axe body spray in high school, right? I'm going to look into a class action lawsuit making you be a fuckboy in high school. But ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to this point in the podcast, I love you. All right. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, we're going to start bringing guests back on the podcast. All right. Sometimes it's hard to do these one episodes. And I, I want to make sure that you guys are getting the value that you deserve out of it. All right. Um, I will see you Wednesday. And don't forget. I love you. <laughs>